Most Christians are familiar with the imagery and implications of the Heavenly Father, God, getting a bride for His Son, the Lord Jesus. But what of the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us that God is a spirit, and no man has seen God at any time. And yet, the Holy Spirit is symbolized throughout Scripture in many ways. In this study, Seeing the Spirit in the Scriptures, we will discover pictures of the invisible God. Let's join Evangelist Scott Pauley now and get better acquainted with the person and work of the Holy Spirit. How well do you know the Holy Spirit? You know, people who know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior have the Holy Spirit as their constant companion because the day you came to know the Lord Jesus, the day you came into the Father's family was the day the Holy Spirit moved into your heart. The Apostle Paul said, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you've never been saved. And if you have been saved, you do have the Holy Spirit. But the fact that the Holy Spirit lives in you does not mean that you're well acquainted with him. It does not mean that he has complete control of your life. And I think one of the saddest things that could ever happen is the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, co-equal, co-existent, co-eternal with the Father and the Son, moves into our hearts and we live our entire life and never really get acquainted with the person of the Holy Spirit. I want to say right at the outset of this brand new study that I love the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit because he's God. I love the Holy Spirit because he helped me know Jesus. I love the Holy Spirit because he's the one that guides me into all truth. I love the Holy Spirit because he is God living inside of me. And I hope when this study concludes, you too will have fallen in love more and more with the person of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, with that in mind, we've taken this theme for this particular study on the person of the Holy Spirit of seeing the Spirit in the Scriptures. Now, why, why do we talk about seeing the Spirit? You can't see a Spirit, uh, but you can see the person of the Holy Spirit symbolized all throughout the Word of God uh, through so many types and pictures that are given to us in the Word. Uh, this will not be an exhaustive study. That's, first of all, impossible, even if we studied the Holy Spirit forever, because you can never exhaust an infinite God. So there's no searching to his wisdom and his understanding. Uh, this will not be even an exhaustive study about all of the attributes or all of the activities of the Holy Spirit. But what I want to do with you is to walk through the Word of God and show you several of the inspired pictures that God gives to us to help us know the nature and work of the Holy Ghost of God. Now let's begin today with just a little introduction given to us by the Lord Jesus in the gospel according to John. Now, you remember I said a moment ago that the Holy Spirit is co-equal and co-existent with the Father and with the Son. And one of the best evidences of that is what the Lord Jesus Christ had to say about the person of the Holy Spirit. If you begin in John chapter number 1, uh, we read this famous statement, often quoted, but I want you to see it in the context of the knowledge of God. John chapter 1, verse number 18 says this, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So uh, the only person of the Godhead that you will ever see with your physical eyes is the Lord Jesus Christ because uh, the eternal Son of God took on a body, took on a human form. And so, as surely as the disciples saw him and the multitude saw him during his earthly ministry, someday every eye will see him, someday you and I will see him face to face. Uh, the principle that Jesus is explaining in John chapter 1, verse number 18, is that you cannot see the Father and you cannot see the Spirit. Now, if you come over just a couple pages more in the same gospel record, John chapter number 4, in the context of Jesus' conversation with the woman at the well, listen to what he says in John chapter 4, beginning in verse number 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. 
For the Father seeketh such to worship him. May I just pause and ask, are you a true worshiper of God? You know, the word should lead us to worship. Every time we come to the scriptures, it ought to lead us a little nearer to God. Every time we open the word, we're opening the heart and mind of God. We're getting a little glimpse of the glory of God, and it should lead us to worship, not just to knowledge, but to worship. Not to be puffed up, but to be humbled in the presence of the mighty God. And notice, please, we worship in spirit and in truth. Why must we worship God in spirit? And the question is answered in the next verse. John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I think it's fascinating that you see all three members of the Godhead. And sometimes people say uh, they don't like the word Trinity because it's not found in Scripture. Well, I want you to know the principle of the triune God, uh, the great three in one, certainly is articulated many times in Scripture. And here's a classic example. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is speaking. He references the Father, and he speaks here of God being a spirit. So you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so God created man in his image. And God, who is a spirit, gave you a spirit. Our spirit responds to his spirit. And do you remember on the first page of the Bible, we'll come to this in our our next study, but the first page of the Bible, we're introduced to the Holy Spirit of God. So uh, the Holy Spirit did not begin at Pentecost any more than Jesus began at Bethlehem. He's always been the Spirit of God present in creation as surely as the Father and the Son But remember that in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve did not see God. It says they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Why is that? Because no man hath seen God at any time. Do you remember, even when Moses caught a glimpse of the glory of God, God said to him, you you can't handle this. You you can't look upon my glory. You, You couldn't take it all in. You wouldn't live if you saw me. So I'm going to hide you here in the cleft of the rock and let you catch just a little glimmer of the hinder part of my glory. And that was enough to put the glow of God on him. Oh, friend, uh, you cannot see God because God is a spirit. But let me tell you what you can do. You can come to see God in the revelation he gives in his word. That's why he gave truth. You see, when you open the word of God, you're getting pictures of who he is. And all through Scripture, we have these symbols of the Holy Spirit that help us to see the Holy Spirit. Uh, You'll see more of what I'm talking about in our coming studies, but he is symbolized as a dove, as breath and wind, as water and oil, as fire and a cloud and wine, uh, as sap, as a seal, as a down payment, and on and on and on we go. You see, The Lord God wants us to know the Holy Spirit. Uh, Is there a mystery to the Spirit of God? Certainly there is, but there's also a reality to the Spirit of God. And we cannot go beyond Scripture, but we must not fall short of it. I was thinking of what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 27, uh, speaking of Moses, that he endured as seeing him who is invisible. May I ask you, how do you see somebody who's invisible? And the answer to that question is, we see the invisible God, we see the Spirit of God through the eyes of faith and through the lens of the Word of God. So would you pray right now, Lord, help me know more about you. Help me understand more about the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Give me a little glimpse of the glory of God in this study. And then let's open the Word. Let's look believingly and see what God has to say about the Holy Spirit as we do. I believe we'll come to know him better, and I certainly believe we'll come to worship him more effectively. May God guide us in our study, and may the Holy Spirit guide us into all truth. May the power of God's Holy Spirit reside on us as we follow the Lord with our lives. For additional resources about the Holy Spirit, visit enjoyingthejourney.org and click on the search icon. On just the subject of the Holy Spirit, you will find dozens of links to podcasts or sermons in which Scott teaches on the Holy Spirit. Also, if you would like to hear more of Scott's Bible studies and full-length sermons, be sure to visit his YouTube channel, Dr. Scott Pauley. We want to thank you for joining us today. 
and we hope you'll join us next time on Enjoying the Journey.